Oh no. I could sense that this was going to be a bad day. I could see Bun Mom appear on the horizon wielding the dreaded pet carrier. She said we're going to Grandma and Grandpa's house, three hours away. Now, I don't know about you, but a bunny like me has got priorities, and long road trips ain't one of them. Usually, they would leave me at home alone, in peace, with my bun sitter. But apparently, she went on vacation. Who authorized her leave? It wasn't me. Note to self, fire her for insubordination upon my return. Naturally, I made a break for it. My little bunny legs were a blur as I hopped for freedom. But Bun Mom, she's got moves. She snagged me quicker than a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Next thing I knew, I was in a blasted carrier. Off we went, with me sandwiched between my two bun bros. Oh, the joy of a three-hour bunny sandwich. Did I mention I'm not too keen on car rides? But hey, I'm a bunny of adaptability. I flopped, twisted, and squirmed until I found my comfort zone, which turned out to be the equivalent of a sardine can. Finally, we reached our destination, the land of pink travel pens. I swear it looked like a Barbie-sized tent. Now, I may be small, but my bunny ego is mighty. A tent? Seriously? Do I look like a camper to you? Do I look like I belong in a dollhouse? Do I look like a pint-sized camper? Zero out of five carrots for that choice, Bun Mom. Zero. They tried to apologize for their poor choices. Pets from Bun Bro? Yes, I do love him. I give him lots of licks. Fresh greens from the garden and treats that even Gordon Ramsay would approve of. But that tent, oh, that tent haunted my dreams. I begged and I pleaded with Bun Mom for a real bunny suite, complete with a mint on the pillow. I got plenty of free roaming time to explore the living room. Bun Dad even came with fresh dandelions from the garden. I sniffed them and made my great escape from the tent. I found solace behind Grandpa's guitars, shooting daggers at the camera with my don't-mess-with-me side eye. More pets. More lettuce. More of everything, and above all, better sleeping arrangements. I remained a bunny of discontent. In an act of daring escapism, that night I tore through the tent like a bunny tornado, claiming victory over my nylon nemesis. And yes, here I am hopping back in just to mock the humans, because now that the tent is broken, they can't lead me in here. And so the saga continues. I was upgraded to an X-Pen, the height of a bunny skyscraper. It was three feet high. But Bundat, ever forgetful, missed the memo on the Heidi house. I immediately hopped right out of there. Yes, through the top. Call me the Michael Jordan of bunnies because I cleared that three-foot X-Pen in a single bound. Unfortunately, nobody caught that on camera, but they found me under the piano bench, leaning an empty pen behind. But bun parents are resourceful. They foiled my plans with a mesh shield, like some bunny fortress. Oh, and they added a cardboard hidey house. Bravo, humans, bravo. However, I did not give up so easily because I was already checking out my surroundings, plotting my next, next escape. But soon I realized I had everything I needed. Space, food, and a decent cardboard hidey house I could also destroy if I wanted to. I came to accept my fate, but I was also pretty content by now. Not a bad setup. I fought for what I rightfully deserved. Now I flop like the queen of the bunny castle I was born to be, and all is right in the world. So is traveling with a bunny easy, you ask? Ha! Let's just say it's an adventure worthy of a blockbuster movie. It turns out we bunnies have quite a list of demands. Space, luxury, accommodations, and freedom to re reign supreme. But after all the hopping, plotting, and escape attempts, I've got to admit, I found my sweet spot. So there you have it, the truth about traveling with a bunny. It's not a simple feat, my friends. But if you've got the patience, the creativity, and the ability to interpret a bunny's regal demands, you might just survive. Bunny, out.